Okay, this video we're going to talk about the capacity of piles, the axial capacity, and in particular we're going to talk about the components that produce this capacity. Okay, there are two components from which piles derive their axial capacity. We're going to describe them. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to think of a, of a situation that you may have encountered. Okay? Um, let's say that you are at the beach. So this is sand. Okay? And let's say this is dry. Just for simplicity. Okay? You go with your friends. You're going to play a game, maybe, uh, what's it called? Horseshoes or something like that. Where you throw horseshoes around and you have to... Um, basically get them stuck on a rebar or a rod that is inserted in the sand, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a rebar or a rod of steel that is, let's say, one inch in diameter, and we're going to hammer it. We're going to drive it like a driven pile into the sand. Okay, so let's say this is a two, two feet long um, a rod or rebar with a one inch diameter, let's say. Okay, so you play uh, this game where you throw the horseshoes, etc. You have to get them stuck here like that, right? And then at the end of the day, you need to pull this out. You're not going to leave it at the beach, right? So you try to pull it out, and what happens? Is it easy or difficult? Turns out it's quite difficult, right? If you try to literally by hand pull this rod out of the sand, you will trigger or mobilize a side friction along the sides of the rebar. And that side friction is going to counter your pulling. Okay? And it turns out that that side friction is actually quite large. So, if you think of, let's say, another rebar looking the same as, as this one, if you push on it, Clearly, you would engage, you will engage, side friction resistance that um, pushes against your push that is in the opposite direction, right? But in this case, obviously, at the end, there's going to be an additional resistance, which is essentially a bearing, right? A bearing stress that develops at the end, okay? On the end of the pile or on, at the end of the rod or rebar. We call this QE prime. Okay? So, the reason I, I, uh, you know, I gave you this example at the beach with the horseshoes, etc., is to give you some kind of, uh, you know, something that you may be uh, used to or, or have seen before, and to give you the notion or to teach you the notion that the side friction resistance mobilizes or is triggered or emerges when we pull or push the, let's call it pile, because it is a pile, right? Uh, uh, the, the, the pile either out of the ground or trying to get it out of the ground or pushing it into the ground, okay? In this case, there is no end bearing because the pile is being pulled. There's no reason for any stress to develop here. So this is gone. But in this case, where we actually apply a load that is vertically di directed axially down, right, downwards, then there is a development of it, this end bearing resistance. Great. So, right here, you can see the two components. Remember, we said that there were two components. This is the first one side friction resistance. This is the second one, end bearing resistance. Okay, notice the word resistance. That means that these two are stresses. If you think about it for a couple of seconds, you will realize that this one, Fs, is a tau. Why? Because it acts. parallel to the plane on which it acts. 
this is the plane and it acts parallel to it so it is a tau this one acts normal to the plane on which it acts right or yeah normal therefore it must be a normal stress sigma so the qe prime is a sigma and the fs is a tau okay now you will learn later that when we have a pile let's say a real you know a real pile for a structure the truth is that however we build it um, either either drilled or driven right we are going to construct stuff on the pile um, in stages right we're going to first perhaps build a pile cap then perhaps build a column or a column let's say on this pile then place a slab let's say that this is a structure like a building right then we continue with more column more slab etc so we are incrementally loading the pile as we add more and more to it right so you learn, you'll uh, end up learning later that the fs that develops um, and the qe that develops they develop at different rates okay so the fs actually develops earlier in the construction process um, and the qe develops later let's just leave it like that